spider crawled inside your body. On average, humans swallow about 8 spiders every single year, but could they poison you or even kill you? Well, only 12 out of 40,000 species of spiders can actually harm you. If a venomous spider mm -hmm. latched onto the inside of your throat and injected its poison deep into your bloodstream, you'd begin to feel dizzy, but that's only the beginning. The spider would then lay eggs inside of you. And once those baby spiders hatch, they would... What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing alright, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net on the web from youtube videos to tiktok videos ig videos facebook anything weird usual and unexplained you can find right here on this channel just want to thank my um supporters man who's tapping into the channel subscribing hitting that post notification bell man hitting that like button man you guys don't know how much you're helping us by just doing those three simple things you guys are pushing us in the algorithm man so we can grow our community together found this video for you guys today let's do what we do best seekers let's seek the truth Truth behind Play-Doh. So I know we all love Play-Doh, but not everything is as it seems. Mm. Pictures have recently been coming out with Play-Doh growing alien spores. Basically, after not being played with for about a decade, the Play-Doh forms some sort of crystal life form. This is because Play-Doh is made up of water, flour, salt, and a special binding agent. So when the water evaporates, these strange crystals form. Ooh. But people are freaking out because apparently when you remix it with water, it explodes. What the hell? Like you say, man, play those. That was our, you know, play those. That was our childhood. We used to play with that in school all the time, you know, make the little shapes or whatever, man, um, for teaching. But they hear that if it goes for that test for unlong, it like forms this, goes into this crystal sea and explodes. You would think <laughs> something like that would be on the unbox, man. But of course, we, we don't get notified like that. You have to find out by ourselves. You learn interesting facts, man, seekers. Tap in with us, man. That's how we saying. Take friends, family, brother, sister, man. You're going to learn some things watching us. That's crazy. Hmm. I got the shivers a couple of times. These are normal looking photos with very disturbing backstories, part one. This seems to be a normal class picture that anyone would take at their school. Yeah. But if you look closely, you notice something a little out of the ordinary. You see, if you look close enough in the top left corner, you will notice classmates Dylan Clubold and Eric Harris holding up fake guns. But little Ooh. did people know, these two would move on to commit the mass school shooting of Columbine High School in 1999. This event began to unravel as these two 12th grade students shot up their school, killing 13 people and wounding 20 before turning the gun on themselves and killing themselves in the school library. Police later found a 20 pound propane tank that they said to detonate and go off inside the building to blow it up, but since the bomb didn't work, they started the killing spree themselves. Nothing but sadness and sorrow filled the air that day as students mourned the loss of their fellow classmates and teachers and Columbine was considered the worst school shooting at the time and still goes down in history to this day. Photos are dark stories, man. You Morgan, never know. you are all eating your own poop, and I'm going to teach you how not to do that. Cat. You know how you poop and fart in the bathroom? Well, like it or not, but as soon as you do that, millions of poop particles fly around your bathroom. And they eventually what the you like nice places like your toothbrush where they land on. So yeah, your mom and dad's poop can be on your toothbrush too. The right way to store your toothbrush is in your bedroom somewhere safe or on your nightstand. But yeah, I'm not going to forget that you ate your own poop. Like this video if you want more helpful facts. That just freaking blew our reality wide open, man. You know how many people keep their toothbrushes in the bathroom? But now to see that, like, the, the poop particles, man, to get into your the toothbrush, well, that makes sense because it's in the bathroom, so it's in that vicinity. But didn't even think about it, man. So you eat your own poop every single day? Nah. Tell me, comment down below how many of y'all keep y'all toothbrushes in the bathroom because I know seeing I do, but now seeing that... I advise you to don't do that anymore, man. What the hell? That needs to be on the actual news or something, man. People need to know about this, bro. Take your toothbrush out the bathroom. We don't need to be having no poop on our breath. You're about to hear one of the most disturbing stories on the internet. Kiplin Kip Kinkle was a troubled boy who was always frustrated and anxious in school. 
By the eighth grade, he was hiding guns in his bedroom, shoplifting, and was caught ordering books on how to make bombs. On May 20th, 1998, in Springfield, Oregon, he was arrested and expelled from school when they found a stolen gun inside his locker. When he returned home after the interrogation, he pulled a gun out of his collection and killed both of his parents. Then he simply ate dinner and just went to bed like nothing happened. The Man. next morning is where things get ridiculous. He brought his entire gun collection to his school and opened up fire, shooting 27 students. People, it's like, they capable of doing the unthinkable, man, but he did that to his own damn parents, bro. What's going through his damn mind, man? It's like, he was already going on the, mountain, the wrong path. Pretty sure that the cost, they already had their eye on him after what happened at school, but they just let him go after that and look what happened. Those cases always get me seekers. If there's a pattern, man, you gotta follow it to the end, man. Yo, what's up? Here's some scary facts about our world that you probably didn't want to know, part 11. Every time you blink, another person in the world dies. And there's actually a website that shows you how many people die in a minute or in a day, how many babies are born, etc., etc. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. For the longest time, toddlers adult teeth are actually located under their eyes. Imagine they broke through the skin, they would look like some kind of freakish baby zombie monster or something. Dogs can actually smell and map out diseases. Now we already know how strong a sense of smell is in a dog, and if you were placed in a line and you were the one infected, there's a very high chance that the dog would come sniffing at you. And if your dog's already doing that, then you might want to call the doc. There's actually a place in Antarctica called Blood Falls, where it looks as if blood is flowing or spewing out of the side of an iceberg. It kind of looks like a crime scene to me, but we won't tell anybody. And lastly, there was once a woman who was blinded by a bad accident, and she developed multiple personalities, some in which she could actually see. You heard me say she was blind, right? No way. That's the first time hearing something like about that. She was blinded in an accident, but she developed most, multiple personalities that allowed her to see. I wonder if that was like her bringing up some trying to compensate for what happened to her to try to give her her, her vision back. How come this is the first time we're hearing about this, see, kid? These stories, man, they need to be on the news, so, man, people need to know about things like this. That's really bizarre. This is the shocking truth about Despicable Me. These may seem like friendly yellow minions, but mm -hmm. they're not what you think they are. The truth is, these minions are actually based off of a Nazi experiment in 1944. These crazy German scientists actually manipulated Jewish children and turned them into slaves. These heavy metal masks would be forced onto children so they cannot speak properly. And the masks were so heavy that they would stunt the children's growth. Like and follow for more content. Minions of Dark Origins confirmed. What the hell? Here's what would happen if a spider crawled inside your body. On average, humans swallow about eight spiders every single year, but could they poison you or even kill you? Well, only 12 out of 40,000 species of spiders can actually harm you. If a venomous mm -hmm. spider latched onto the inside of your throat and injected its poison deep into your bloodstream, you would begin to feel dizzy, but that's only the beginning. The spider would then lay eggs inside of you, and once those baby spiders hatch, they would crawl out of your mouth in search of food. Share this with someone who hates spiders. Yeah, I got spider phobia, man. I might develop one after this scene up, bro. I don't do bugs. I don't got time for bugs. Bugs ain't for me, bro. <laughs> I try to stay away from the man, cause let's just say I don't have a great history with, with bugs. Spiders crawling through your throat. I can't even imagine that happening. What this lady did to her children will absolutely shock you. On October 17th, 2017, 24-year-old Lamora Williams was charged with a double homicide after murdering and torturing her two toddlers. Oh, but damn. what was even worse is the way she did it. You see, Lamora actually killed her children by placing them in the oven and turning on the heat. And while doing so, she proceeded to call the father of the children, Jamil Penn, on fuck? video chat to show him that she was killing their children. On the video chat between the two, Jamil was scanning the room and found his two sons laying on the floor, dead. But you see, at first, she was found not guilty of committing the murder of the children. But in the end, they found out that she put them in the oven to cover up the actual way that she killed them. 
And even as tragic as these events are, there was one three-year-old that was found left in the house, and that was Jamil Penn Jr., who was the third son of Jamil. Bro, she FaceTimed him so she could see what he was doing. That's a different type of just madness altogether. You're already doing a horrific act, man, but just to show the father what you're doing? That's where old seekers. You, you see this better. in your watermelon? Call 911. So you're eating a watermelon one day. When you notice, it's a little bland. It's also cracked and the seeds are white instead of black. Spit it out right now. Because your watermelon has been pumped full of borchloroferon, which is a toxic, illegal growth hormone. And farmers still sometimes use it in the U.S. What? I just had some watermelon yesterday. I had some so white seeds you know in what it. This is? It's called the Devil's Face, and it appeared on the map in Atlanta. Atlanta no. is considered one of the most religious places on Earth, and it was told that it could signal a sign. The plants and the land formed together to make what looks like a face that was seen from a satellite. This scared so many people within Atlanta's area that they began working on the area literally to wipe it out completely. They began cutting down the trees and flattening everything until you could no longer see a face. Mm. From that point on, the face literally disappeared. Do you think this was a coincidence? Satan face on Atlanta. They said Atlanta is one of the most religious places. Um, really? Because I'm the things that go down in Atlanta. I don't think that's something you wouldn't expect to hear. You know what Atlanta has become? I'm guessing back in the day, but now at these, I don't, I don't think so. But they said Satan's face was on there, and they wipe. They was working hard to wipe that off, man, and get that off. The, I guess they map, bro. Really? I'm going to have to deep dive into that, Seekers, man. Like I said, tell me if you guys want me to deep dive into these stories. I can find it for you guys. I'm good. I can imagine them walking the earth. That's scary. following you man what the i mean you know sometimes i kind of got you know that kind of happened to me a couple of times man you walking if you just turn around real quick because you think you feel somebody's like watching you you're telling me that's like a spirit or you picked up on a type of energy maybe before that's like you know following you trying to give you a message or something crazy to think about seekers really is has that ever happened to you guys guys tell me down below like i said share your stories <laughs> seekers um that's it for this video for you guys today if you guys stay with me to the end of the video you're a true one thank you guys for supporting the channel thank you guys for sticking with me man we're growing slowly but surely like i said guys so guys hit that like button subscribe hit that post notification bell man also follow me on my social medias down below so we stay connected as a community we're gonna continue to grow. We're gonna continue to um get get better with each and every video. I'm doing daily uploads for you guys. You guys gonna catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and keepy videos. On the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikToks, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the um supporters, man, who's been subscribed to the channel, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. You're helping us grow our community, man, the Seekers. So I really appreciate that support, man. Found this video for you guys today. Let's do what we do best, man. Let's see the truth. This girl took her mom's life on Facebook Live. On January 8th of this year, 28-year-old Tananzan Oris Beltran went with her mom, 55-year-old Olivia Lucia Beltran, to a Santa Rosa police station. Tananzan needed to go there because she needed to pick up her vehicle after it was impounded following an earlier chase. 
Mm -hmm. While at the police station, she filmed herself waving an open pocket knife in front of everybody. An officer stated that she was too mentally unstable to drive, but they still let her go home. At 5 p.m. that same day, Tenanson was on Facebook Live when she stabbed her mother. Wow. Viewers of the Live ended up contacting police to let them know what they had just witnessed. When officers arrived to the scene, they noticed that Tenanson was on her balcony holding a knife in her hand. Right next to her was her mother, and her clothes were just soaked in blood. Mm. Tenanson failed to respond to command, so a group of officers broke through the front door, and she was arrested. Olivia suffered from numerous stab wounds and was rushed to a local hospital. Unfortunately, the surgeons were unable to overcome the extensive life from the injuries and she passed away. Detectives worked with Meta slash Facebook and had the video removed. Pause. Nansen was arrested on one count of murder and was being held without bail at Marin County Jail. To this day, there is still no clear motive on why she did this to her mother. This man Crazy willingly allowed room. himself to be eaten alive by a cannibal. 43-year-old Armando Brands was an engineer from Berlin who always fantasized about being cannibalized by another human being. So, in 2001, he began searching the website Cannibal Cafe, which was, yes, a legitimate website, for anyone willing to cook him and eat him. The on the Cannibal Cafe website, that Brands met 30-year-old computer technician Armin Muse. Armin also had a fantasy of cannibalizing human flesh, and so over the next few weeks, him and Brands messaged each other back mm. and forth, discussing the best way to cook Brands' flesh and then dispose of his body after they were done. Finally, on March 9, 2001, Armando traveled to Armin's apartment and willingly allowed himself to be tied up before Armin began to try and chew off Armando's penis. Armin found that the penis was too chewy to bite off, so he instead castrated Armando with a knife before frying his severed penis in olive oil and then feeding it to him. After this, Armin proceeded to kill Armando by stabbing him in the neck and letting him bleed out in the bathtub for over three hours before he finally succumbed to his wounds. After Armando died, Armin proceeded to cut up his body into large chunks, storing them in a freezer, and over the next six months, he would consume over 44 pounds of Armando's flesh. Armin would be caught six months later after looking for another victim on the Cannibal Cafe website. Now, at first, prosecutors weren't sure how to go about this case because Armando willingly allowed all this to happen, and they know this mm. because Armin recorded the entire thing, the castration, eating of the penis, and the entire time Armando was telling Armin that he wanted more. However, since people can't consent to their own murder, Armin was eventually found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. However, to this day, he still gets weekly visits out to the city where he can roam about and do as he pleases. How the hell can he let's get weekly roamings on a website like that, man, actually existed? Blow my damn mind, man. Nowadays, man, I shouldn't be surprised, but if you probably type anything around the web, it'll pop right back up, man. Stuff that shouldn't even be allowed, like cannibalism. Somebody want to be eaten online, and they found it just like that. Internet man, it gives you too much easy access to things we shouldn't have. Because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? I accept my plea. Exactly. As much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. Mm. You have done nothing to control those urges. The decision to assault was precise, calculated, manipulative, devious, despicable. Mm. I'm giving you 175 years, which is 2100 months. I just signed your death warrant. Damn. I, I need everyone to be quiet. These villagers dig up. Wasn't I? Remember, I think I remember seeing that case. Uh, wasn't he like already? But then he worked with like the Olympic team or something like that. And how he had that many access, man, because he was like a sports coach or something. Y'all already deserve. She signed like she said. She signed this death warrant, man. They were clock as they should have been. Had been but... Go up their dead family members every three years, and you won't believe why. These people are from a village in Indonesia, and during their many 
Halloween festival, they get their ancestors' corpses, clean them, then put them all out to dry, and dress them in new clothes as a ritual. Mm. And the reason is because they believe they're showing them love and respect. Different cultures have different, they do different things, but it's kind of bizarre, man. Could you guys do that? I can't even think about doing that, burying up, digging up your loved ones. The Legend of Bunny Man Bridge. Hmm. In 1904, not far from this bridge in Fairfax County, Virginia, was a mental asylum. Nearby residents didn't like the fact that mental patients were near their new homes, so they had it shut down. Hmm. While the patients were being transported, their bus crashed and all were found except for one. A patient named Douglas Griffin who disappeared into the nearby woods. In the upcoming weeks, bodies of rabbits were found strewn about the woods woods as if someone was eating them. On Halloween night, Douglas Griffin struck and killed a group of teenagers that were hanging out underneath of the bridge. Mm. They were gutted and hanged like dead rabbits. Now there is a ton of variations of this urban legend, but there is a slight bit of truth behind the origin of it. There was a police report from 1970 that said a person dressed in all white threw a hatchet at somebody's car. What? And the person had something on their heads. And that is where people filled in the blanks with it being rabbit ears. There was another report of a man running around with a hatchet in a bunny suit also in 1970. Who knows? Maybe there really was a yeah. killer bunny man. This man has been sentenced the to a bunny man would believe it? prison after doing the unthinkable to his daughter. Tony Valles is a 66-year-old from Helena. On the 10th of July 2022, he was at home with his partner, Heather. Tony's 8-year-old daughter, Ariana, and his 18-year-old son were also at the house at the time. Suddenly, two women entered the property who he believed were evicting him. Mm -hmm. He flew into a violent rage and grabbed a weapon from his bedroom. At this point, he began shooting. He shot Heather and she fell to the floor, and then he shot at his son. His eight-year-old daughter tried to escape and run from the terror, but she was hit with gunfire. She was on the stairs when she was hit by a bullet and she fell back. She tragically died after being rushed to hospital. After his daughter's death, Tony stated, I'm sorry for all this. I can't undo what I've done. The pain and the misery will last a lifetime and I'm sorry for all that. Tony was sentenced to serve 100 years in prison. This Rage is the most unsettling show I've seen Disturbing this things. Netflix just released a show called Baby Reindeer where a man named Donnie is relentlessly stalked by a middle-aged woman named Martha. But it's based on a real story and the guy it happened to is playing the main character. So mm. let's talk about the real events the show portrays. So in the show, Martha's obsession with Donnie starts after he offers a cup of tea for free. And according to the creator, that is is really what started her four-year obsession with him. Damn. Also, over the course of the stalking, the real Martha sent the creator 41,071 emails, what? 744 tweets, 46 Facebook messages, 106 pages of letters, and 350 hours of voicemail She messages. was dedicated. And the real texts and emails are featured in the show. One of the saddest real details of the show is that the creator does go to the police to try to report Martha, and they totally brush him off. They just don't feel like she's enough of a threat, even though she's showing up to all of his comedy shows she's sending him that many messages and she fully believes they're in a relationship mm. and the show is really interesting in that it portrays the gray area that the creator richard gadd faced while experiencing being stalked this is a bit of a spoiler but he himself was a survivor of sexual assault so in, in a way this kind of undying love was something that he craved and in interviews he's is that he's not purely a victim, that this situation is really gray because sometimes he would indulge in the attention that she gave him. Hmm. It's definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it already. It does get very intense at times, but let me know if you've seen it. I've seen that school with you Netflix a couple times. I don't recommend it, but I really didn't know what it was about. But now that she... It's broken down for us, man. Any fellow seekers, they want to check it out, man? Should I check it out? You guys can leave a review. to check that out edit call it like I see it his life was taken for last reaction to a Facebook photo no way. this is 18 year old Isaiah Craig Fitzgerald and he was from Missouri on May 25th of 2023 Isaiah had came across this photo of 20 year old Tanner Watkins and his girlfriend mm -hmm. he reacts to the Facebook photo photo with a laughing emoji. Tanner ends up responding to 
Isaiah saying what's funny in an argument begins. Tanner then ends up telling Isaiah that they should meet at the park to fight after a heated exchange. An emoji? At the agreed upon location, shots were fired from both vehicles. Isaiah was fatally shot and his girlfriend was seriously wounded. Police have responded to the scene after receiving reports of gunfire and they stopped both vehicles as they were leaving. Isaiah was pronounced dead and his girlfriend was transported to a local hospital where doctors treated her injuries. Mm. Officers ended up confiscating weapons from both vehicles. Tanner and 18-year-old Caleb Ramsey were both taken into custody. Both pled not guilty to all charges and were acquitted in December of 2023. The judge had ordered a mistrial after the jury could not agree on a verdict. Tanner and Caleb were charged with three counts of murder, three counts of assault, unlawful use of a weapon, and four counts of armed criminal action. The most terrifying prisoners of all time. This is Jamie Osuna, the man with a thousand faces. In 2017, Jamie was sentenced to life in prison for the 2011 murder and torture of a woman from Bakersfield. During his court case, you can see him smirking, rolling his eyes, and mocking the family of the deceased, even giving a th thumbs up as the judge announces his sentence. From there, he is transported to Corcoran State Prison, where things got worse. Way worse. He is given a cellmate, Luis Romero, who had spent more than two decades in prison himself. On March 9th, 2019, guards check their cell and find the most gruesome scene. Romero had been beheaded and several of his body parts were removed and fashioned into a necklace worn by Jamie. Ha 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 had been written on the wall in blood as well as the man with a thousand faces. Someone that freaking dangerous man, he had to be probably put into a solitary like as soon as he got there, man, because obviously doing the case you show, saying that he was showing no remorse, man, putting a thumbs up during the trial, and telling him, man, those are the most dangerous people, man, who can do an action like that, that have no remorse. And look what happened. The man with a thousand faces, man. Crazy. How about blood or something like the Joker would do? Prosecutors in the Brian Koberger case have said that they are not buying his alibi. Koberger's defense has spent months giving very few details about his alibi, essentially only saying that he was out driving around the night of the murders and mm -hmm. that nobody could corroborate this. But then a couple weeks ago, they said that they have an expert witness that can testify about Koberger's cell phone movements the night of the murders, placing him away from the house. But prosecutors are not buying it. And specifically, they said, quote, the defendant's alibi lacks specificity and state the specific place or places mm. at which the defendant claims to have been at the time of the alleged offense and the names and addresses of the witnesses upon whom he intends to rely to establish such alibi, according to Idaho okay. Code 19-519. So essentially, the prosecution is saying that, that Koberger's alibi is not specific enough and just because an expert witness can testify about his cell phone movement this does not mean that it's a corroborating alibi and that they need specific witnesses to be able to verify his alibi for it to be a proper alibi the next hearing for the case has been scheduled for may 2nd other updates in the coburger case include that prosecutors are also moving to have the following hearing after the may 2nd hearing mm. on may 14th be under seal this is essentially to protect the information that is being disseminated to the public that could potentially taint the jury pool okay. and speaking of the potential jury pool the judge has ruled that the defense can continue their surveys of the potential jury pool to determine if the potential jury pool knows about Brian Koberger because the defense is trying to get a change of venue. But mm. that's all for the latest updates with Brian Koberger. Things are just continuing to slowly move along. The longest prison yeah, sentence justice in, in that history. Case. At number five is Joseph Legend. He has served 67 years and 54 days in prison, and he was released earlier this year. He was mm. convicted of murder at the age of 15. Damn. He was released at 83. At number four is Joseph Phillips who served 68 years and 236 days. Ooh. He was convicted in 1952 of raping a five-year-old girl. He was paroled in March 2021. Third with only nine more days in prison is Paul Goodell Jr. He served 68 years and 245 days. He was incarcerated in 1911 at the age of 17. He was released in 1980 at the age of 86. 
Once released, he died in a retirement home seven years later at the age of 93. Oh, in second home. place, and the only non-American on the list, is an Australian man by the name of Charles Fawcett. He was sentenced to life imprisonment after murdering an elderly man and stealing his boots. And before number one, Ryan, I'll go to prison next in the comments and leave your autocorrect finished. He'll write that you'll go to jail. And in number one, it's okay. Francis Clifford Smith. He's currently serving 72 years and 90 days. He was also sentenced to death for the murder of a night watchman on his way out of a nightclub. But his sentence was changed to life imprisonment in 1954, two hours before his scheduled execution. He was lucky. Change just like that. All that time gone. Basically, if you get over 50, 60 years, that's that's a life sentence, man. As long as you get out, all that time's wasted, man. Think before you act. Signs of a societal collapse in a country are so often things you would never even think about. For example, a shocking study was recently published showing a concerning rise in people being found so long after death in the UK that their oh. body had decomposed. And we're not talking about just days and weeks here. Yeah. The study cited a number of cases like 38-year-old Laura Winner, who struggled with mental health problems and was found in a mummified, almost skeletal state at her flat in 2021, more than three years after she had died. She passed away in 2017, three years before the pandemic even began, mm. the body of another 61-year-old woman, Shalia, was found badly decomposed in her flat in London in 2022, two years after she had died. The study said that men were more than twice as likely as women to be discovered long after her death in a decomposed state, and also linked this tragic trend to lo loneliness, societal breakdown, and a loss of people's social connection. And that is sadly why... A 20-year-old cold case has had a major Crazy. breakthrough after an eerie twist led to police identifying a teenage girl's remains. Midtown Jane Doe was found mysteriously entombed in cement in a former New York hotspot during construction in 2003. Investigators mm. believe she was fatally strangled bound with electrical wire and wrapped in a carpet before being cemented into the building's basement. Now, Midtown Jane Doe has been identified as Patricia Kathleen McGlone, a girl from Brooklyn who was last seen in the late 1960s. DNA from a woman killed in the 9-11 attacks, also named Patricia, helped authorities identify the girl as the two were related. Of course, some facts you... They both had the name Patricia, man, and that link is what led to that case breaking all those years ago. The things that they have to line up in the universe in order for that to happen. This is crazy if you think about it. You didn't know, part 262. On August 17th of 1980, nine-week-old Azaria Chamberlain disappeared from the tent during a family camping trip. Hmm? Mother Lindy reported she saw a wild dog leaving the tent and believed that her baby had been taken by dingoes in the Australian outback. Despite a frantic search, nothing was found and no body was ever discovered. Extensive press coverage of the incident portrayed the couple as monsters and they received multiple death threats. Mm. Believing that the police were feeding information to the media, the entire court case was a madhouse and the public opinion hugely divided. Some believing they murdered their own child, others believing that dingoes really did take their baby. Their religious backgrounds stirred up rumors that cult-like activity had taken place, and at the time, dingoes were not generally seen as dangerous. But despite all the horrible and negative publicity, Lindy and husband Michael continued to plead their innocence. Mm -hmm. But on October 29th of 1982, she was sentenced to life in prison for murder, with Michael being charged as an accessory and Damn. sentenced to 18 months. After she spent four long years in prison and had no more legal routes to take, new evidence was discovered. Azaria's jacket was found partially buried in a highly populated dingo area. This led to her prison release in 1988 and both her and Michael were completely exonerated of all charges. In 2012, a coroner issued the final report on the case confirming that their baby had been taken and eaten by dingoes. So she was right all along, man. It goes to show you how sometimes like public opinion it's a powerful thing, man, if you because if you get the public on your side, it can get people to believe anything, even if it's untrue. Scary times we live in. Great news, the remains of six women have been found inside of a man's apartment. 
Authorities say the investigation began when he allegedly broke into a neighbor's apartment on April 16th. Mm -hmm. From there, he essayed and strangled a 17-year-old girl. The victim's mother returned home shortly after and saw the man leaving. It was at that point he slashed her throat and then fled. According to authorities, the mother was able to survive, however, the daughter did not. With the mother's assistance, they were able to identify the suspect only as, quote, Miguel. After the incident, they searched his apartment and, quote, clearly indicated we are looking at a possible serial killer of women. Authorities also confirmed that notebooks were located that, quote, may well be narrations of the acts that Miguel carried out against his victims. Mm -hmm. In addition, they found cell phones and ID cards belonging to multiple women. They said that five of the ID cards found belong to women who have been located alive. However, they did not specify how many belong to women who are still missing or deceased. Prosecutors did confirm that there were remains of six women found in his rented room. Quote, other biological material was also found in the rooms. In addition to the ID cards and cell phones found, they also found bones, B-L-O-O-D, and a saw. At this time, authorities have not provided any further details. To stay up to date on this case, make sure you click the playlist below. What do you guys think? Drop in the comments. Don't this is a case that used the gay dating app Grindr to find victims so he could eat them. So on Christmas Eve 2019, 25-year-old Kevin Bacon told his roommate that he was going out for the evening to meet up with a man that he had recently been talking to on the dating app Grindr. Now after three days, Kevin failed to come home or contact any of his friends or family and they started to get worried and they eventually went to the police to issue a missing person warning. Later right. on the day that he was reported missing, Kevin's car was actually found abandoned in a parking lot along with all of his clothes and his cell phone. Using his cell phone, police were able to actually access his Grindr account and see that the last person he had messaged on there was a man named Mark Lutunsky. Police were able to track down Mark Lutunsky and they asked him if they could look around his house for a bit and he actually happily agreed. However, when police went down to the basement, they made an absolutely horrific discovery. Mm -hmm. Hanging from the rafters by his ankles was the nude body of Kevin Bacon. His throat had been slashed, his body had been drained of blood, and most shocking of all, he had actually been castrated. Upon further questioning, Mark happily admitted that he had actually castrated Kevin and then brought up his testicles and ate them, and that he was planning to use a food dehydrator on the rest of Kevin's body so he could preserve it and eat it later. After Mark was arrested for the death of Kevin, police actually discovered that he had had several previous run-ins with the law in the months leading up to the death. Two men on two previous occasions actually called 911 stating that they had escaped from Mark's basement after he drugged them, tied them up, and was planning to torture them. In both cases, police just chalked it up to a gay dispute and they didn't actually look further into it. Mark was quickly found guilty of Kevin's death and now he's currently serving life in prison. This man Gotta follow up on the details, the man. In New York and was found six days later in California with no memory how we got there. Hmm. This is easily one of the most bizarre disappearances and reappearances that I've ever heard of. If you've never heard of this story before, buckle up because it, it's wild. 49-year-old Canadian firefighter Danny it was skiing at White Base Mountain in New York when he finished. It was the last day of their ski trip. All of Danny's friends had gotten tired and then headed back down to the ski lodge to wait before Danny who wanted to do one more trip down the mountain but mm -hmm. Danny never returned. Danny was missing on top of the highest mountains in the area. Everyone's thinking that there must have been some kind of terrible accident. All of Danny's belongings are still back at his resort, his car, his passport, his ID, his phone. A huge manhunt was being done on the mountain, but as the days went by, the chances of finding Danny alive were slim. Then, six days after he vanished, Danny was found alive on the complete other side of the country, over 2,500 miles away in California. Danny was still wearing the ski outfit that he disappeared in six days earlier with a new haircut, a new cell phone, and no memory of the past six days. Eventually, Danny was able to recall that he believes that he was the passenger in a big rig truck at one of those points and thought that he must have suffered some kind of head injury. Mm. But he had an examination at a hospital that found that he had zero injuries at all. Extensive investigations were done in both California and New York that brought forth no answers. Six months after Danny disappeared, he was able to recall a couple more big, big details, but honestly, it wasn't much. Now, here are some of the most highly believed theories that you can find online. Okay. Could Danny have got a concussion on the mountain that resulted in some kind of memory loss? It sounds plausible, but a lot of doctors that have looked at this case have said that it's unlikely because memory loss after head trauma usually only lasts at most 
48 hours, not mm. six days. And apparently Danny didn't even have any injuries to begin with when he was found. Some also believe that maybe Danny was abducted by aliens who dropped him back off on the wrong side of the country. Some people also believe that maybe Danny wanted to disappear on purpose and start a new life, but then got cold feet. Honestly, I have no idea what I think happened. This story for real sounds like something out of fiction. To this day, we still have no idea what happened to Danny during those six days that he was missing, but let me know what you think happened in the comments. As well, man, drop it down below. What do you guys think happened? He was at the top of the mountain six days later unscathed on the opposite side of the country man like they said memory loss it, they say aliens abducted him i mean you never know he could have fell through a port or something i don't know i'm definitely going to check into that man try to see the reports see if he really like you said he recalls some more vague details about it we definitely got to check that one out you guys, if you guys made it with me to the end of the video, your true seeker seeking the truth, I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, tell me down below, guys, if you guys liking this new style that I'm trying out, man. Like I said, I'm saving my thoughts until after the video plays. I'm trying to pause way less. If you guys can see what the past couple of videos, I've paused way less, man. And um, like I said, I'm just trying to bring you guys the best content I possibly can. I'm trying to grow this community, these seekers. I believe we can do this, man. So... I just need you guys help us by spreading the word, man. If you just subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell, hit that like button, man. You guys are doing me a huge favor. You guys gonna catch in the next one, man. We're doing daily uploads this month as well. We might even get double on some days. I don't know yet. I'm out. Peace, seekers. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, man, we break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook videos, man. Anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank you guys for the support who's been tapping into the channel, subscribing, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. I really appreciate the support. It allows me to put back into the channel. And, um, yeah, that's the way we do best, Seekers. Let's seek the truth. What we got today? This is why you should fear for your life if you buy or sell items on Facebook Marketplace. 56-year-old mm -hmm. Denise Williams of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, wanted to buy a refrigerator for her boyfriend. She found one listed on Facebook Marketplace. The seller was 26-year-old Joshua Gorgon. Denise went to his apartment alone to check out the fridge but never came out. On Monday, she was reported missing by her family, and police were able to track her using her phone and information from a Facebook account. Mm -hmm. She was found dead from multiple stab wounds at Joshua's apartment. Joshua was arrested and charged with criminal homicide. When he was interviewed by Cambria County detectives, he admitted to stabbing Williams to death with a kitchen knife following an argument over the cost of the refer- The mystery of Kate Yup is- that right there, man, is exactly why if you guys going to meet up somebody to buy something like online from Marketplace or something like that, always make sure it's in a public area. Never meet them at their house or a location of their choosing, man. You have to do it in a public meetup, a public setting, because you never know what could happen, man. Like you said, they were disputing over the price, and look what that turned out. Never go to that to a person's place, man. Especially if you're buying something offline, online? No is still very much unexplained. Kate Yup was a YouTuber who would make mukbang videos where she would eat excessive amounts of food. These were not normal videos. Kate was eating aggressively fast, almost like she was being starved or she was forced. She also wears a blindfold in every video, so her identity is completely unknown. But viewers became seriously concerned when they started to notice warning signs that Kate might be under someone's control. There are indicators that there was somebody else in that room with her while she's eating all of this food. You can hear him breathing in the background of her videos. She's eating so fast that in one video, she actually chips her teeth. And when she shows it to the camera, these are teeth that are rotted. But the most compelling evidence to support that Kate Yup could be a victim of trafficking are the cryptic messages that she's left in the text editing of her videos. Since this all kind of blew up in the media, the channel has gone totally dark and there hasn't been a new video in Barbie has a much creepier yeah, history than I thought. 
I'm going to show you some theories about Barbie that have been keeping me up at night. And I cover all sorts of creepy and true crime stuff, so follow along. So in 2010, Barbie released a doll that had a camera on her necklace as well as a video screen on her back. Come this again? doll has since been discontinued, but there's a lot of rumors about what happened to this footage when it was recorded. So people have always theorized that the footage was collected and sold either by Mattel or by someone more nefarious. And it's been mentioned how easy it would have been for hackers to collect and sell all this data. Mm. The FBI even put out a statement about it. Barbie also released and discontinued the Hello doll, which could listen to children and respond with over 8,000 pre-recorded answers. A lot of parents worried that these dolls were potentially recording their children and then selling that data. But this doll also has really concerning reviews. Mm. Like people say that the doll won't take no for an answer. Like if she asked if you wanted to hear a story and then you said no, she would actually push back and then just tell you the story anyways. What? The doll would also ask really chunky? specific and targeted questions about children, like how big their families were and if they had any siblings. Was this doll just collecting market data on children or was it something much weirder? No one could work out much why the child kept getting sick. So doctors took a look at the cameras that were set up in the room and what they saw gave them chills. Nine days after Garrett Spears was born, he was ad admitted to hospital. Since then, Lacey Spears would care for her son through a myriad of illnesses. No mm. one could figure out why young Garrett kept getting sick. Lacey, the dutiful single mother, would document his illnesses online. She created an online blog where she would chronicle her struggles and document her struggles to find a cure for whatever illness Garrett had. In 2014, Gareth, age 5, was rushed to hospital. Doctors again couldn't quite work out what made him sick, but they were able to treat his symptoms and he made a full recovery. Doctors were gearing up to discharge him. However, within a few short hours, Gareth took a turn for the worst, and without warning, he sadly passed away. The hospital staff were devastated, but very confused as to what had happened. So they did a blood test, and that's where they found something very disturbing. Garrett had deadly levels of sodium in his blood. He had been suffering from sodium poisoning, which meant someone was poisoning him. So when hooked up to certain machines in the hospital, there are cameras. They took a look at those cameras, and they saw what was happening. Oh, his mother, Lacey, had been poisoning him with sea salt. Lacey was arrested. She was diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome by proxy and she was sentenced to 25 years my name's halves and i'm tell simmons in crime story for more remember to follow this is some clout people have to be better man when clout comes into the picture they just lose all sense of morality never fails man clout is one of the most dangerous drugs there's out there nowadays yo and shoot gia word in the back 12 times killing him instantly. With her son-in-law's body on the kitchen floor, Cynthia went on with her birthday celebrations, first mm -hmm. going to a local cafe for breakfast, then to a casino, and finally to her favorite coffee shop, where she was brought into questioning by police. And what followed is an interrogation that would make anyone's blood curl. Sorry, I'm so come here, sorry. Come here. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna put handcuffs on just for now. Where's the man? that depicts a 12 year old girl after she just stabbed and killed her nine year old brother. She's seen crying and apologizing to police and her mother repeatedly. This will take place on Friday night in Oklahoma. Just sit there for a second. You don't have the knife on you, right? No, I swear I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. It'll be nighttime and the one parent will be sleeping upstairs when the 12 year old daughter would stab her nine year old brother repeatedly in the chest. She then would go upstairs to wake up her parents to inform them of what she had just done. I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but I don't know if you guys know what I See how we're looking around? Uh, yeah. So this is death row inmate Taylor yeah, Parker, who went to extreme lengths to cover up her lies. She even killed a pregnant woman in order to steal the baby from her womb just to prove she was really pregnant. So a picture here we have Taylor and her boyfriend Wade 
and what appears to be a baby bump what what later is found out is just an actual prosthetic baby bump Mm -hmm. not a real one she was covering up this entire time pretending to be pregnant so that wade would not leave her now she couldn't have gotten pregnant because she had a hysterectomy several years earlier but wade was unaware of this Mm. well that's where reagan comes into play because reagan actually was pregnant around the same time that taylor said she was pregnant and she knew reagan because she had been a photographer at reagan's wedding now taylor's perpetrating this lie the entire time so even she's holding a gender reveal party and going to ultrasound sending fake images to her boyfriend Mm -hmm. he never gets to go into the doctor's office she keeps telling him oh sorry it's covid you're not allowed to go back there so he begins to grow a little suspicious of the whole thing especially after when the day she was supposed to be induced his house catches on fire and a bomb threat at the hospital they were supposed to be induced at occurs Mm -hmm. and then she becomes three weeks late on her pregnancy that's when Wade's mother pulls him aside and says, you know, I actually think you're onto something. She's probably not pregnant. Wade confronts mm. her once again about the whole thing, and she says, watch. I'm going to get induced at a hospital in Oklahoma, and you will see. So Friday, she sets up an appointment to be induced. So that morning, Wade actually goes to a hog sale because he was supposed to go down to this sale about four hours from their house, come back, drive her to the hospital, and watch the baby be induced. Well... Um, ends up being that he goes there and it was a false. There, she had set this up for him to actually go to this hog hunt so she could go see Reagan and murder her, and she does. Sadly, she goes over to her friend's house, attacks her, stabs her with a scalpel that she had over a hundred times while her little daughter is standing right there. Then she cuts open her stomach and extracts the baby from it and rushes towards the hospital. She gets pulled over for speeding and says, hey, look, I just had this baby. It's unresponsive. Help me, help me. She had actually tucked the umbilical cord into her pants to make it look like the baby was still attached to her. But the hospital staff begins to grow suspect that she refuses to be checked at all. And the baby shows up dead. And they actually heard that there was a baby that was abducted from another murder victim after the mother of Reagan showed up and found her daughter with 100 stab wounds. Sadly, at court, all this web of lies comes out. Reagan and the baby were killed. She was sentenced to murder and sentenced to death in Texas, where she currently sits on death row awaiting execution. So, update on your life. One of the most freaking bizarre cases man, we heard, man. And it just goes to prove when a person is lying, man, they spin in those webs, how they would just try to do anything to cover it up. Like, she went to the extremes. That's because, like I said, the boyfriend and the boyfriend moms were catching on to, hey, like, you probably not pregnant. Like, you're on to something. And look what she did. Lies to be one of the most dangerous, unpredictable people in the world. Seekers. Let teacher be so Casey B didn't know a lot of people that went to school with her are starting to speak out on social media outlets and the Daily Mail just published an article on Saturday. So the headline reads, she was a master manipulator. Alexi Treviso knew she was pregnant and had even picked out the name Alex for her baby boy but hid it from everyone. So what the students told Daily Mail is that around mid-November, students already started to speculate if she was pregnant or not, which she was denying all the rumors. Even her cheer coach had asked her if she was pregnant, but she said that it was the pill, which is why she gained so much weight. But she obviously looked pregnant. I mean, she was actually pregnant, but they felt that they couldn't keep asking her because it was just gonna make them look wrong as in they were giving her the benefit of the doubt that maybe she was just gaining lots of weight and when the news broke back in january that someone had discarded their baby in the hospital people already started to suspect that it was alexi so the students did explain that after the news had broke out both alex and devon were gone for a couple of weeks which they were able to put two and two together and when they came back alex at one point had the audacity to write a poem called people talk basically addressing all the rumors that were going on about her The reason they also said they couldn't just come out and talk about what was actually happening is because the school was threatening them if they were to talk, they were going to be suspended and not be able to participate in the graduation ceremony. Mm. She is currently out on a $100,000 bail and awaiting trial on September 11th. Oh my god, you People guys, talking about the truth. the biggest story in true crime today, it. or it, it probably will be for the next week. Did you guys see that someone confessed to the murder of JonBenet Ramsey? For my younger followers, this is JonBenet Ramsey. 
She was killed in her home December 27, 1996. Mm. She was a six-year-old little girl. Um, she lived in Boulder, Colorado, and someone came in the middle of the night, it was presumed, and kidnapped her. Now, it has been long speculated that the parents were involved, so they said they woke up and there was a ransom note. They were very well off, and I've heard theories also that the son was involved. He was roughly her age, maybe a couple mm. years older than her. So, like I said, she was killed on December 26, 1996. Now, on December 27, 1996, this was a huge national story. Now, before the story came became known as widely as it was, the Boulder police received a tip that someone had gotten a phone call from mm. a friend that he hadn't spoken to in years saying that he was scared. He hurt a little girl in Boulder, Colorado. Now, authorities never looked into this or questioned the guy, but the guy in question was Gary Oliva, and this is a picture of him at the one-year anniversary at the Jean Benet Ramsey vigil. This was a picture taken by a private investigator hired by John Ramsey, which was Jean Benet's father. Um, he gave them this information, and they never looked into it further. Wow. So, again, like all my videos, what is going on with the justice system in this country? So they never looked into it, never questioned this guy, but four years later, in 2000, this guy was arrested with, uh, relating to CSA, I can't really say it on TikTok, but you get the idea. He was arrested in 2000, at which point he wrote more letters, confession letters, to this friend that lived in California. Mm. Okay, so fast forward to 2016, this guy gets arrested yet again and cops find pictures of Jean Benet on his phone and the CSA charges that he was being arrested for multiple times and the multiple tips from this guy that he had called and said, I'm scared, I hurt this girl, were never looked into. What? what? Today we're going to be talking about a murder How? and a serial wow, rapist system. by the name of Mr. Cruel a few decades ago was Australia's most wanted and was also known as the boogeyman of Australia. Mm. So according to various sketches, this is what Mr. Cruel looked like. And between 1987 Ooh. and 1991, he broke into three homes of three Australian parents and then he would bound the parents and take their daughters. On the morning of August 22nd, 1987, a masked man broke into a quiet home in the suburbs in Melbourne, Australia. He forced both parents onto their stomachs and then bound them. And then he locked them in a closet as he proceeded to rape their 11-year-old daughter. He cut the phone lines and then he left after assaulting the daughter. Mm. When the police first heard about this case, they were trying to figure out what happened and asked the parents. The parents then said that the attacker came into their house with a gun and a knife and tied them in knots which can only be known by sailors. So this gave the police a hint as to who he could be. But because he was wearing a mask, he was unable to be identified. The little girl who was attacked then told the police that he had made a phone call and told the person on the phone call to move their children and also called him a bozo. But when the police looked into it, they found no record of any phone call. This was just something that Mr. Cool did to throw the police off his case. He was doing this to purposely confuse investigators. And that's when he went for his second victim, Sharon Wills, who was 10 years old. Just days after Christmas in 1988, John Wills, his wife, and their four daughters were asleep. Mm. And this house was a couple of miles away from where the first crime took place. Wearing dark blue overalls and a dark ski mask, Mr. Cruel came back. He held a gun to the father's head and just like the previous crime, rolled the parents onto the stomachs and bound them and gagged them. He knew Sharon Will's name and woke her up. He then blindfolded her, gagged her, and took her away, and fled the house with some of her clothing the next morning. By the time the father got help, it was too late. Mr. Cruel was gone and so was Sharon Wills. But 18 hours later, a woman stumbled upon her. She was dressed in a green garbage bag, standing on the street a quarter after midnight. Because she was blindfolded throughout the assault, she couldn't give much information to the police. But Mr. Cruel made sure to wash her body and cut her fingernails and floss her teeth so there was no forensic evidence available. He then told her that he was the boogeyman. But this was just the beginning of Mr. Cruel's attacks. He then proceeded to attack another girl and murder and attack one more. Hmm. Running out of time, so I'm going to have to make a part two, but make sure you check it out. This is one of the most high-profile pedophiles in Hollywood, Jeffrey Jones. 
You might recognize Jeffrey from a number of movies he's been in, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, The Hunt for Red October, and Beetlejuice. Okay. It's highly ironic to me that in a lot of the movies he was in, Jeffrey Jones played the villain, and he ended up being one in real life. Mirror. So after his career flourished in the late 80s and 90s, let's fast forward to 2002. That year, Jeffrey was arrested for the possession of CP, if you know what I'm talking about, and he was accused by a 17-year-old boy of soliciting him to take nude photos. These charges get even more disturbing when you realize that the young boy who accused Jeffrey of soliciting him to take nude photographs was 14 when the charges were originally brought up and the accusations were made. Jeffrey pleaded no contest to the solicitation. He openly admitted that he had done this horrible thing. But once again, because of legal loopholes, because he admitted to this and pled no contest, that meant that the other CB charges were completely dropped. No way. And what happened to Jeffrey after all this? Well, he got five years probation. He also had to go through counseling and register as a sex offender. And yes, if you're wondering, to this day, he is still registered as a sex offender. You can find the records of all of this online. Mm. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender throughout his life. But it seems like Jeffrey didn't want to be known as a sex offender for the rest of his life. And he would end up being okay. arrested twice for failing to update his sex offender registration. And in 2006, when working on the set of the movie Who's Your Caddy? The community of Aiken, South Carolina, where the film was being filmed, complained to the government and complained that a sex offender was on set. This was due to the fact that families had been invited to visit the set with their children, and they had no idea that there was a predator lurking amongst the crew. Right to, know. to this day, a lot of people don't know what this guy has done, and even Justin Bieber posted a photo with him a couple years back, and mm. a lot of people were obviously a little mad about that. And I think it's important to realize that these people are everywhere. They're your friends, your family, your neighbors. They're even celebrities. And at the end of the day, even the people that you look up to and have seen a million times on the silver screen could be the worst people you've ever met in real life. If you like these types of stories, give me a follow or listen to my wife and I's podcast, Murder in America. Like you said, man, it's always, it seems like it's always somebody in Hollywood or famous in that room that has that, that problem, man. I know the beef that's going on with freaking Jake and Kendrick Lamar right now. You know what Kendrick said? How you been dropping disses and about hitting about certain stuff? It's like it's it's crazy. It's a rampant problem in Hollywood, man. Or when it involves famous people, they never. We don't know if it's true or not. It's not confirmed, but it's just crazy how it's always like someone in that room or something like that. That's just something to think about. I know if Amanda was alive, she'd be a Patreon member. Thank God for true crime. What would? It Here's the mm -hmm. thing. I enjoy listening to some true crime podcasts. I like when they're mysteries and there's like an investigation involved. I honestly like it when a journalist does it and they're in tandem with the family and the family knows about it, so they're kind of working on it together. Like, there's a lot of good examples. There's someone knows something. Um, uh, uh, crime junkie, although not a great name. My favorite podcast of all time is um, the last podcast on the left. They don't do all true crime. They do a bunch of other stuff, too. But, like, when they do true crime, they're really good at, like, demystifying, like, these serial killers. Like, oh, they did and They're like, no, they're losers. So I really appreciate that. Ooh. But anyway, someone recommended My Favorite Murder, and I listened to an episode. And I was like, no. First of all, the first half was just, like, 40 minutes of them doing bits between them. And I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to be a true crime podcast, don't you do research and stuff? They did very little research, like, they infantilized, like, the victims. Like, it, it, it was just really uncomfortable to listen to. So I checked their Instagram, and I'm like, how popular are these guys? And they have a lot, a lot of followers. Mm. And they either posted or reposted a picture. I don't think it was them specifically, but um, of someone doing a true crime party. And in my head, I'm like, no, there's no way they're doing, like, actual victims of crimes. Like, they... They would, they're probably doing, like, movie things or, like, Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, it was actual cases what? of actual people, and they came dressed up. And one of them was dressed up as a pageant queen, a pa like a toddlers and tiaras kind of person. Like, mm. the full pageant, like, the crown and everything. Because she was impersonating a girl named JonBenet Ramsey, who uh, was murdered in 1997, who was six. And they, like, reposted it. Like, at what point of delusion are you doing that? Like, that is, that's genuinely disgusting. And they're really popular. Guys, again, I would just be, like, considerate of your consumption. Like, there are a lot of, like, true crime podcasts that, like, work very closely with victims and, like, raise mm -hmm. a lot of money. Like, uh, Crime Junkie, like, 
uh, started a project where they actually um, identified two unidentified people um, because they raised enough donations to get the DNA testing for them, which was like, oh, it was amazing. It was like, oh, okay, you're doing something. Not doing bits and not dressing as like a child victim for a party. And last podcast on the left is a lot of like alien episodes and Bigfoot episodes. Those are my favorite. That's actually insane. Truly, that's one of the first time I heard about it. A true calm party where they dress up as the... They, who even thought of that idea? Who even thought, hey, let's have a true calm party and we dress up as the, as the victims? Knowing what they went through, y'all know the story, the background behind it. And y'all throwing a party, dressing up as them. Like, they don't think how that could like, affect the family members and stuff, stuff like that. Like, what happens if somebody found out, I guess, in their family, man, that they're having a party and they're dressing up as a victim. That's not funny. That's not even a great idea, a fun idea. Who the hell even thought that up, man? People nowadays, bro, I'm trying to tell you, they don't think before they act, before they do things like this, man. It's crazy. The things people do, man. But as a form of entertainment, we got to be better. Everybody, man. All around. You guys, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a true seeker seeking the truth. I greatly appreciate the support, guys. Like I said, if you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification, man. Hit that like button, man. We're growing. I greatly appreciate the support, man. Like I said, I know we can grow our community, the seekers, into something special. I just need you guys' help to do to follow those three simple steps, man. We're golden. Like I said, man, we've been daily uploading, man, every single day, man. I'm planning to do the same thing um, this month. Hopefully, I want you guys to stick with me through the journey. Like I said, I've been trying to upgrade the channels. Like I said, tell me also down below if you guys like my new reacting style, man. Like, as you guys can see, I'm really, I'm pausing way less. I'm trying to limit the two or three pauses, maybe throughout like the whole video and just save my thoughts until after and kind of speak on it. I'll really only pause like through the video if it's like really important, if it's something I really have to get off my chest. But tell me if you guys like this new style. I'm trying to bring the best entertainment for you guys also, man. Like I said, send me videos you guys want to react to. If you guys, I know y'all been saying y'all don't want to see the same thing. So if you guys can send me the videos, that's why I say follow me on my social medias because you guys send me the videos. I can put them, I can like compile the clips into the next video. So I need you guys to follow my social medias as well. I'm out. Peace, secrets. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos on and there on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG reels, Facebook, anything weird, usual, and unexplained you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the um, supporters, man, who's been subscribing to the channel, hitting that post notification bell, hitting that like button, man. You're helping us grow the seekers. I really appreciate the support, man. Let's do what we do best. I seek the truth. Did you know that there's a disturbing backstory to this children's book? Mm. This is Eric and Corey Richen, and they live together with their three young children in Utah. Eric had a renovation business, and Corey was a real estate agent. On March 4th of 2022, around 3.22 a.m., Corey called 911 after walking into her room, and according to her, she saw Eric lying on the ground, and he just looked cold to the touch. Once officers and paramedics arrived on the scene, and they did pronounce him dead. Corey stated that that night she made a vodka drink for her husband to celebrate that she had sold a house. She then stated she went to go lay down with one of her children in their room because they were having nightmares, and she okay. returned to her and her husband's room around 3 a.m., and that's when she found Eric on the floor. An autopsy was done on Eric, and it revealed that he died after ingesting a five times the lethal dose of fentanyl. Damn. Not long after Eric's death, Corey had published a children's book called Arnie Whiskey, and this was catered towards children who were grieving after losing one of their parents. Hmm. Investigators ended up looking through Corey's phone, and that's when they saw text messages between her and another person buying drugs for them to poison Eric. This was not the first time that Corey tried to poison Eric, just the other times she just did not succeed. What? Supposedly, Eric wanted a divorce from Corey, and just a few weeks before his death, he has changed his will and life insurance policy. Hmm. Eric had told his family many times, if something happens to me, it's my wife's fault. Corey was arrested and is currently sitting in jail waiting on trial. 
A story that just no continues to keep me up at night Tragic. is what happened to the Yuba County Five. 1978, there were five men that were coming from a basketball game in Chico back down to Yuba City in the middle of the night. Now, all five of the men suffered from mild intellectual and psychological disability. Never gonna know why they did this, but for some reason, when they were on the highway, they got off of the highway and went onto a dirt back road in the Plumas National Forest. Mm -hmm. You know, is that for whatever reason, they eventually got out of their car and started walking on foot and they vanished. Police eventually found that car and they expected something's wrong with this. Not the case. The car had gas and it was working fine. So why did they get out of it and walk mm. through the woods? Nobody knew what happened to them until eventually somebody stumbled into this cabin. Quick, before I get into it, if you want the full episode on this, you can listen to it on Creep Time, the podcast. Inside that cabin was the body of Ted Wire and he had lost 80 pounds didn't make any sense because the cabin was full of food eventually they found everyone's body except for gary mathias mm. this 74 year old wo what the hell happened man like they said they just went on a dirt back road and just started walking and they just found him in a cabin something more to that case man that that we didn't know about i have to deep dive into that one woman robbed the bank after she was scammed of her life savings. This all happened in Ohio when Anna Mayers walked inside a credit union with a face mask on and demanded that the bank teller give her money while she threatened them with a gun. She ended up only taking $500 and then she got in her car and drove off. It only took police two hours to find Anne in her home and when they arrived, she was gardening and pretended like she had no idea what was going on. She eventually admitted to the crime and it turns out that Anne was recently scammed out of thousands of dollars online and owed a lot of money to family and friends and because of that she became pretty desperate and felt like her only way out of this mess was to rob a bank and thought that she would get away with it her sister also told police that Anne was going around telling family members that she was going to do this but everyone thought that she was only joking she was charged with aggravated robbery with a firearm and tampering with evidence and is being held on a $100,000 bond. Mm. The UK's Gotta heaviest man people, Jason man. Holton has just passed away one week before his 34th birthday. His heartbroken mother said that he began overeating as a teenager after his father passed away and at one point he was eating roughly 10,000 calories a day. Over the years his weight increased to the point where his legs could no longer hold him and after becoming bedridden he didn't leave his room for a staggering six months. He said he would cry every day because he felt like he had imprisoned himself. At that point he weighed around 317 kg or for those who in the US 700 pounds. In 2020 his organs began to shut down and he had to be airlifted by crane from his mother's third floor flat by a team of more than 30 firemen and engineers. When he got to the hospital doctors said they wanted to send him to London Zoo to get a heart scan because the only machine big enough to hold him was used by vets for very large animals. Luckily thanks to his treatment at hospital his condition began to stabilize but four years later he was rushed to hospital yet again but this time doctors said that they couldn't save him and he had about a week left to live the coroner's mm. report stated on tuesday he died from organ failure and obesity at only 33 years old man he was young i can't believe he said it took like a team of that many people just to get him down with that crane that's insane man Careful what you eat. This woman got zero prison time after stabbing her boyfriend 108 times. No. In 2018, 26-year-old Chad O'Melia's life was savagely taken in his apartment in California by his girlfriend. 33-year-old Bryn Spetcher says that on this day, she was tricked by Chad into smoking a highly potent strain of marijuana, which caused her to go into psychosis. She says that she remembers immediately walking into the kitchen and grabbing several knives and stabbed her dog before going after for Chad and taking his life. Bryn then turned a knife on herself and attempted to take her own life before police arrived. And authorities also said that it wasn't easy restraining Bryn and that the taser didn't even work on her. Mm. Now, Bryn's defense argues that she reacted this way because she only smoked less than six times in her life, which that combined with the high potent marijuana explains why she took her boyfriend's life. Bryn ended up only receiving just two years of probation 100 hours of community service and no prison time this pastor that case man is freaking dangerous man because it kind of set a precedent man if somebody didn't you know 
take that type of you know material before or something like that some happens they just don't have no freaking responsibility to it man that's what i said just stay away from those type of things seekers because you know, like drinking and doing that man activity it could change it it could change it to a whole different person that's on me personally i try to stay away from that stuff as much as i can because that just ain't me accused of unaliving his own wife this case is currently ongoing, but it's been so highly suggested, so this is what we know so far. On April 28th, Pastor John Paul Miller made the shocking announcement at the end of his church service that his wife, Micah, had unalived herself. He then asked everyone to leave quietly and not discuss his wife's death. Hmm? Micah's family and friends do not believe this cause of death and have taken the social media with the hashtag justice for Micah. John Paul also wrote Micah's obituary where he talked mostly about himself, not Weird. even Micah who's the one that passed away. He also painted their marriage as like a perfect relationship, which is really odd considering that Micah filed for divorce and a restraining order against her husband only days before her passing. Mm. The weeks prior to Micah's passing, she was sharing on Facebook about abusive relationships and really just hinting that something wasn't right. A friend of Micah's has come out and confirmed that Micah told her that there was abuse in the marriage and also that church funds were being used for things not church related and since more friends and family of micah have come out with similar accounts also been some speculation that john paul was having an affair a years long mm. affair with this woman that he's been seen in the days before and the days after micah's death that woman's husband also passed away in a really suspicious way but that's just online speculation for right now the investigation is currently ongoing so hopefully we have answers very really soon but in the meantime make sure to leave all your thoughts theories questions and case suggestions in the comments for me the FBI caught a serial killer whose goal was to become a beast or an animal, specifically a bear slash saber tooth tiger hybrid. He had built himself a beast suit that he was using to maul his victims. What when the FBI the... was originally looking at the bodies of the deceased, they thought it was a regular animal mauling. However, they soon realized it was fossilized skulls that were making these impressions. This mm. led them to investigate Randall Tier, a man who was working at an anthropology department at a museum. He engineered the suit himself at his house and he used parts of bones that he was stealing from his museum job. Mm. However, Randall Tier is also a victim in this situation because when he was younger, he was seeing a psychiatrist for these urges that he was having to become a beast, but his psychiatrist was none other than Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter is far from an ethical psychiatrist and actually used psychic driving to make Randall Tier become the beast that he is today. He actively encouraged Randall's urges to become a beast and even gave him ideas of how to do this and how to be sneaky about it. What? And that's another reason why Hannibal Lecter is so evil. I make this point all the time. Because Hannibal Lecter is not just a serial killer. He's not just eating people. He is actively incubating other serial killers as his career goes on as a psychiatrist. How far would you go to get more guac at chipotle because this man shot an employee at chipotle over his serving size on april 5th 32 year old aaron brown walked into a chipotle in southfield michigan to order some food and then insulted an employee when he wasn't served enough guac aaron was then seen on surveillance video going around the counter and packing his order with more guac until a mm. worker knocked the guac out of his hand that's when aaron grabbed the 21 year old worker and slammed him into the fridge and shot him in the knee and while all the customers were terrified and ran out the restaurant, Aaron was seen calmly collecting his food and drove off without speeding. But Aaron didn't even make it too far since this Chipotle was located across the street from the police station and he was arrested. He was charged and was being held in the Oakland County Jail on a $20,000 bond. And all for some guac. For some guac, really? People need to really think their priorities, man. When I be hearing cases like that, like, oh, these small items, it really makes you think how, like, people just over-exaggerate over the smallest things, man. Always amazes me, bro. Over some damn walk? Really? You can just ask for extra, man? Let's add it. Call it out like I see it. 
Damn, I'm telling you that you would be able to predict if someone in your life is or could become a serial killer? Is mm. there a trait that they all have in common? Is there a recipe that creates a serial killer? Are they born evil? Is it a product of their environment? Some experts believe that there is a recipe. The McDonald's triad, which what? are three elements that are the key to predict if someone will grow up to become a serial killer. Being cruel to animals, setting things on fire, and wetting the bed after the age of five. Mm -hmm. Many experts also say that a serial killer's childhood holds the key and believe that nearly 100% of serial killers experience some kind of mistreatment in their childhood. I find really interesting because some of the most infamous serial killers, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Paul Bernardo, all claim to have come from really loving childhoods. Yeah. Turns out that head trauma in adolescence could also be a big factor. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, David Berkowitz, Son of Sam, and Fred West, and many others all experienced some kind of extreme head trauma in their adolescence that resulted mm. in a change of behavior. So it's pretty well known that the majority of serial killers are white men between the ages of 25 and 34, but did you know a majority of serial killers are from the United States? By like a ridiculous majority. These statistics are so scary. For my astrology girlies, most serial killers are either Virgos or Geminis. New York is a state with the most serial killers, and most serial killers are born in November than any other month. Statistically, you are more likely to become a serial killer if you're the eldest child and the least likely if you are an only child. Also more likely to become a serial killer if you are left-handed. What do you think makes a serial killer? Do you think it's genetics or a bad childhood or just because they are left-handed? And is there anyone in your life that maybe you're looking at a little bit differently now? Let me know in the comments. Maybe it's a combination of all of them. So if you didn't know, this woman's name is Brianna Williams. And what you just watched was her reaction to finding out that the police had discovered her sinister secret. Mm. So back in early November of 2019, Brianna contacts the police in order to report her five-year-old daughter, Taylor Williams, missing, stating that she had seen her the night before, but in the morning, she was gone. Taylor's disappearance sent shockwaves through the community, and people quickly began looking for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Mm. However, weeks into the investigation, doubts begin to surface as detectives realize Brianna's story just doesn't make sense. Then, all of a sudden, Taylor's remains are found 400 miles away from her house, with what? investigators ruling that her cause of death was starvation, meaning Brianna had unalived her. Mm. At this point, Brianna knows that the police had figured out what she had done, so she tries to unalive herself, but this fails and she gets arrested. In court, Brianna is found guilty of Taylor's death and is sentenced to a well-deserved life in prison. Brianna's story shows that you cannot escape justice and that karma will always catch up to you. Always. Missing American and Australian surfers were just found dead in a well in Mexico. What? Behind me is Callum and Jake Robinson and Jack Road. They were missing for about a week and then they were found dead in a well in Ensenada, Mexico. Mm. They all disappear on April 28th. They were last seen in Baja, California surfing. One of the family members got worried because one of the men were a type 1 diabetic and he hadn't communicated for a while, which was out of character for him. Then on Saturday, May 4th, all of the men were found inside of a well and a fourth man was also found, but he was unrelated to these three. Mm. Apparently, the fourth random man's body had been there for a long time. So I'm assuming this is kind of a reoccurring thing that was happening. They were killing people and stuffing them in the well here. Police believe these men were killed by thieves trying to steal things from their trucks, such as tires, catalytic converters, stuff like that. All three men were fatally shot and dumped inside of the well. And three men in connection with his death have been arrested. Names have not been released yet. And apparently this well was boarded up, making it nearly impossible to find. Mm. Let me know what you guys think about the story in the comment section below. And as always, these videos are for informational purposes only. I've been hitting like... Like things, man, about like tourists, how they gotta be careful, you know, when you go out to different countries, especially because you never know what could happen, man. Somebody's watching you, they know you coming from a different place, and they just straight targeted you. And look what happened, man. There were some surfers just trying to go out for a good time, and a tragic ending, man. You gotta be careful now, these seekers. Sad but true.
Warning, viewer discretion is advised. In April 2015, Shayna Sims arrived at a funeral home posing as a makeup artist. A 38-year-old woman called Tabitha had recently passed from natural causes and Shayna was there to work on the body. Okay. While she was there, instead of making the body look presentable for her funeral, Shayna carved off one of Tabitha's breasts and cut off one of her toes. Mm. She tore clumps of Tabitha's hair out, smeared her makeup, and then slashed her face. She even stole the shoes off Tabitha's feet before leaving. Wow. The attack was discovered by two horrified members of the funeral home who raced to tell the manager about what they had found. The police later arrested Shayna, and she was found with a folding neck with strands of Tabitha's hair still attached to it, as well as a pair of scissors, a box cutter, and various makeup items. During the trial, it was revealed that Shayna had snapped after learning that her husband was apparently having an affair with Tabitha. Seething with anger, she took brutal revenge on her love rival and was found guilty of eating a body, interrupting a funeral, and unlawful removal of a body part from a deceased person. Mm. Shayna Sims was sentenced to 16 years in prison, but was released after only serving four. That was the last TikTok ever posted by TikToker Anthony Barajas, aka mm. Anthony Michael. On July 26, 2021, Anthony and his friend Riley were seeing a movie. On that evening, they were seeing the ironically violent film The Forever Purge, mm. which itself is a critique on American violence. On that day, the two of them were just sitting inside of the theater enjoying the film when suddenly they were both shot in the back of the head. Now, sadly, Riley Goodrich, who was 18 at the time, would die at the scene. But Anthony, who was 19 at the time, was taken to a hospital but passed away a few days later. But why did this happen? Well, it's not a very clear story. So this is Joseph Jimenez, and he was actually arrested the day after the murder. He was the guy who pulled the trigger. Now, Joseph's friends were actually in the movie theater. There were only six people in the theater at the time. And they said that during the movie, Joseph was acting strange. He was mumbling to himself. And at one point, he left the theater and came back in with some sort of a package. Joseph's friends then left the theater because they were afraid of what he might do. And a few moments later, they saw Joseph running out of the side door, getting into his vehicle and speeding away. So it turns out that Joseph had just randomly decided to murder Riley and Anthony. There was no motivation. He didn't know these two. He just decided he had to kill somebody. And strangely, their bodies weren't discovered until after the movie was over because there was only six people in the theater, including mm -hmm. Joseph, his three friends, and these two. So according to Joseph, he was hearing voices that were saying his friends and family were going to be killed if he didn't take a life. He also stated that he wished he didn't do it, but unfortunately, you can't take back an action like that. It's just chilling that even just sitting in a movie theater, an act of violence like this can strike you. And obviously, rest in peace to Riley and Anthony. This is such a tragic story. The reason that I felt one was a serial killer, because I've come across people that have killed a lot of people in gang wars before. You know, I did the video about No Limit, G Herbo's crew. There's a guy called Mad Max that, you know, say he had nine or ten bodies, right? But mm. I think, for me, where I felt he became a serial killer was he got these multiple murders. There's more than three murders. Uh, more than a month apart, some of them are years apart. It was really like, when he became famous, the personal gratification that he seemed to get out of killing, I would say he was responsible for the murder of FBG Duck uh, in a way that he felt responsible. He tweeted a go emoji like minutes after Duck was killed. You know, he got a lot of personal gratification out of these killings. I think he wanted to continue these killings. He wanted the whole world to know. I wish I'd have thought of this when I made the documentary. I've only thought of it after, but I feel like Von, I feel like he's the closest I could describe him to a traditional serial killer is the Zodiac Killer. Because Vaughn killed all these people, he became famous, he wanted everyone to know that he killed all these people. You know, you ain't a killer if you only got two bodies. Like, talk about bodies, I've got two, four plus three, three plus two. Like, Vaughn wanted the whole world to know that he was killing. He was putting out these codes, he was getting this personal gratification from killing, and he still wanted to kill. He wanted to have Duck killed, he wanted mm. to have Man Man killed. There was a supposed rumored body in Atlanta, now I kind of disproved that in the video, but it's like, he wanted people to know he was a killer. I think he was more interested in getting people killed than rapping. I heard about, I've seen some, there's a, seen some videos on there how about saying King Ron was like, was really like that, bro. But no, like, he had that different side to him, man. Might have to check out a video or two. What do you guys think? Believe that? About King Ron? Here's what Baby Reindeer didn't tell you. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few weeks, you will probably have heard of Baby Reindeer. 
It's a new series on Netflix, which is a harrowing account of abuse and stalking. Mm. And it's told by the actual victim in this case, who plays himself. However, there are a few things that have been missed out. Now, Richard Gadd, as I said, was the victim in this case and told the story by playing himself. But Richard was actually a lot more successful than he gave himself credit for in the drama. Mm. He featured as an actor on Outlander and Click, and he also more recently co-wrote an episode of Sex Education. Obviously, we know Martha's real name and identity were left out of the series. Richard also intentionally changed elements of her character. He said that he wanted to change bits of her life, as well as obviously using a different name for her in the series, so that she wouldn't be hounded in real life. Okay. He actually wanted to prevent people from harassing the real stalker. Another element that was left out of the story were exactly how many messages his stalker left for him. Mm. Now, Richard has since stated that there were over 41,000 emails, 744 tweets, and 46 Facebook messages from four different Facebook accounts. Ooh. He stated that the total length of all of the voicemails that the real Martha left for him totaled over 350 hours. Damn. She also sent him 106 pages of actual physical letters, which we never saw in the series. Mm. Richard stated that not only did his stalker send him emails, Facebook messages, and tweets, she actually also sent him physical gifts. These gifts included an actual baby reindeer toy as a present, mm. and she also sent him sleeping tablets and boxes. Another true crime story of how they were caught. Please. Lee Hartley, a lieutenant in the Navy, was on a carrier warship when he started feeling ill. Started having stomach cramps and vomiting. He would get better, but then get sick again. And it got so bad, he had to get flown out to Florida, where he later died in the hospital. A savvy mm -hmm. doctor noticed that all his organs had been so damaged that he suspected there might be heavy metal poisoning. And he requested that at an autopsy. Because of that doctor, they tested for possible poisons, and they found that there was arsenic in his system. Now police had to look at 4,000 possible possible suspects aboard the ship. Lee mm. scoured all over the ship but couldn't find the source of the arsenic. Police were also able to learn that while he was in Spain, three months before his death, he was also feeling ill along with another shipmate. Police also found mm. out when the ship stopped in Spain, his wife had actually flown out to meet with him for eight days. She had cooked both men breakfast before they fell ill. Police interviewed his wife Pamela and she denied involvement and would pass a polygraph test and the case would go cold for 13 years. Then in 1995, police reopened the investigation and started interviewing people close to the family. Police interviewed Pam's brother, who actually said she had recruited him to try to kill her husband, but he refused. Arsenic is retained in the fingernails and hair of victims longer, so forensics were able to look at a strand of his hair to get a timeline of when he ingested the arsenic mm -hmm. and how long he'd been exposed to it. Police determined that his wife Pamela sent him care packages when he was on deployment, and through those hair samples, learned that he first got ill just a few weeks when he was on his deployment. He was then sick in Spain when his wife was there. Police mm. believe the victim consumed baked goods from his wife while he was on ship and he continued to fall ill before he was hospitalized. Police also noted that Pam visited him in the hospital in Florida and the arsenic samples spiked yet again while she was there with him. Police interrogated Pamela and confronted her with the evidence and information and she quickly confessed. She told police she loved her husband so much she didn't want to break his heart by getting a divorce. What's crazy is she was charged with second degree murder would get a 40 year sentence but would be released after 16 years but that was how she was caught crazy man these people they just can't leave the relationships if like both of them being alive or something like this like well somebody wants somebody wants to end a relationship they always have to do the unthinkable man to freaking to end it all because she said she don't want to break his heart but look what happened These cases seekers, man. You learn more and more each and every single day. If you guys stay with me to the end of the video, if you're a true seeker seeking the truth, I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, guys, if you guys want me to react to other different um TikTok clips, man, like I said, guys, follow me on my social media so you guys can send me the clips in my DMs so I can incorporate them into the next video, man. If you guys want me to check out some more stuff. Like I said, I'm also working on making a Discord, man. But it's more complicated than I thought, but trying to work through it so at least if you guys don't want to um send me it on my social medias i can make up the discord and you guys can send it there but we're growing seekers gonna appreciate appreciate the support man we're gonna keep going 
uploading daily this whole month, man. So we need it. I want to see some clapping emojis in the comment section down below, man. So you got support. You guys can catch in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace seekers. What's up, seekers? Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing all right, man. If you guys are brand new to the channel, you guys don't know what we do. We break down scary and creepy videos on the net, on the web, man, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos, IG videos, Facebook, man, anything weird, usual, and unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. As you guys can see, man, we're going to be checking out some creepy um, TikTok videos for you guys today, man, doing what we do best. Let's seek the truth. So are we about to witness and hopefully live through a, a world-ending geomagnetic storm? Hmm. And will it be a repeat of the Carrington event? Welcome back to the Heart Pill Show. I'm your host, Pharaoh. And in this video, we're going to talk about how this current geomagnetic storm could have bad implications. All right. Now let me start out that this will most likely just be a loss of phone signal and pretty lights in the sky event. But let's get into why this can be something scary. So mm. Yesterday, Thursday the 9th, and today, Friday the 10th, there have been many, many corona mass ejections from the sun. NOAA released a statement and a warning stating that at least two X-class, which are the largest solar flares, Ooh. were observed releasing from two massive sunspots on the sun, along with several M-class. Now, these are CMEs, or corona mass ejections, mm. and there was another X-class release this morning, Friday the 10th. That CME from this morning is supposed to catch up with the other five from yesterday, right as they impact Earth. It's all scary stuff, and what has people up in arms and concerned about this is the last time something like this happened, the Carrington event. Oh. The Carrington event was known as the most destructive CME, and it happened on September 1st, 1859. It was so intense that it created such bright auroras in the sky, you know, the northern lights, mm -hmm. that some gold miners in the Rockies woke up thinking that it was morning. But the reason why this event was documented and is such a callback point to future destructive potential of the sun is the fact that the potential EMP that was created by the sun during this Ooh. event fried all the telegraph poles and systems. Now, at that time, that was the means of communication across long distance and was also really all the electronics that the world really had. So the concern today in today's world is if that kind of event occurred again, which is the concern with this current you know, geostorm, mm -hmm. with how heavily our modern world is dependent on electronics for communication, for transportation, for food, for survival then we would be thrown back thousands of years as a humankind because we depend so heavily on electronics. So, yeah. But most likely mm. we'll just lose phone signal and have pretty lights in the sky. Good times. Fried. What do you guys think, man? That just that video, man, just shows us how much we depend on, man, technology. And if it just can get taken out like that, we all discombobulate. We're all over the place, man. I'm surprised this geostorm, like these facts, hasn't been on the news or something so people could prepare. Wonder why that is. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. It is an important update. The geomagnetic storm has just reached Category 5, a G5, with a K index of 9. It's the strongest geomagnetic storm in 20 years. Damn. What you're looking at right here, if I get off out of the way, is the actual auroral oval right now. It's mm. all the way down to the central United States. You can see it right there. And that's almost dead down, as a matter of fact, as far south as St. Louis and Washington, D.C. I mean, really amazing. Now, it has to be clear, and of course, it's getting dark right now, but definitely head away from city lights. Look to the north tonight. This could be one of your few chances in your lifetime at these latitudes to be able to see the aurora borealis, but get to dark mm. skies. This map actually confirms what we saw just a moment ago. This is typically what you'd see down to the red line is where you'd be able to see an Ooh. aurora when you have a G5 storm like this, which extends from, oh, around Norfolk, Virginia, westward to Northern California. And uh, you could see it, just amazingly how far south it is compared to normal. I mean, if it's just a regular uh, 
geomagnetic storm would be all the way up here in the northern tier of the United States to northern Maine, and it's nowhere like that. So mm. definitely try to get out tonight, look to the north. Yeah, there will be some communication problems and things like that, but let's concentrate on the aurora right now because that's the fun part of these geomagnetic storms. Good luck tonight. A strong really? solar storm to strike Earth since 2005 is on its way tonight. Because of that, uh, NOAA did issue a geomagnetic storm watch mm. for the planet Earth. This is due to a G4 class solar storm, uh, which is severe on the scale. Now, some of the effects that we might see from this tonight are possible voltage issues to the power grid up north. Uh, disruptions are possible to satellite navigation as well. And auroras could be possible all the way down to the Gulf Coast tonight, uh, especially on the horizon. If you want to have a good shot at seeing this, you are going to have to get out of areas of light pollution and also use a camera as well to mm. see it best on the horizon. Now, if you really want to see it tonight, you're going to have to go north up into places like South Dakota, Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan, and especially up into Canada. Really? If you guys haven't heard yet, there's signal issues going on. There's a geostorm affecting everybody. It uh, doesn't matter if you're on RTK WAS, Trimble, Egg Leader, Deer. Um, everything's getting knocked out. Mm. A couple of geese here. Even the geese getting affected. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can call us, but I'm sure everyone's being affected, so I just wanted to let everybody know. The thing that's good to me is, man, we haven't been seeing this, like, on the news and stuff, man. It's like the geomagnetic storms and stuff. Everybody just keep here. They're focusing on the lights, but they just, like, kind of ignoring the possibilities of what could happen. That's concerning. The geomagnetic storms. When I looked up, I'm about to say, I looked up in the sky at night, and I ain't seen no aurora lights. And that's a rare opportunity. Maybe you guys saw, cause we we all over the place now. I've been seeing from the comments. So tell me if you guys seen, if you guys been affected by this G5 um storm. Yeah. Whoa. Another one. Some additional geomagnetic activity about midday today, May 12th. Um, so they are forecasting that it'll be somewhere between the G4 to G5 severe status. Um, so be on the lookout, guys. This geo storm, man. It's affecting it. It's affecting everything, bro. That's why I'm top 10 with the TikToks, man. I would have never known. But has it been on the news or something, man? I'm glad for our community seekers. It keeps me tapped in. And a machine that was used to control the weather. Then somehow the machine got hacked and it started malfunctioning. And it started controlling the weather on its own wheel. And it started killing people. So they had to destroy the machine. Because they had got hacked and started malfunctioning being out of control. Hmm. That geo and there's a movie called Geostorm. Is that a sign? Is that any correlation between those two? Any similarities? Hey, man. Nowadays, you never know. That Geostorm, like I said, that was a movie that came out. And we guys been, you know, these videos, you've been seeing how these movies and stuff, they're based off, like, true events. Sometimes even these fictional movies behind the scenes, man. Like, every story, every movie, every piece of media you see, man, it comes from a true story somewhere around the world. What do you guys think? If you guys made it with me to the end, you guys are real ones supporting the channels. I really appreciate that, man. You're a true seeker. So, thank you, man. Like I said, guys, if you guys want to stay tapped in with the community with us, man, I'm following me on my social medias down below. I'm really trying to get my numbers up on there as well. So, I really appreciate the support just so we can, you know, stay in contact with each other and we can grow and we can share what we find together. You guys, are gonna catch you in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, seekers.